Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. Good morning and welcome to Terra at Home. I'm Leslie Stewart. I'm here with Chef Chris Hayworth and uh, we are at Spencer's at the Waterfront and uh, this is just such a great place to be. And we are talking about a really interesting event. You like to have some sort of focus events sometimes and uh, special suppers. And uh, this is hard cider tasting dinner. Yep. This is kind of fun. Now, this is something, uh, you know, again, over in Britain, we were talking, you know, everybody drinks, people love their hard ciders. They do indeed. Not as popular here, but kind of starting well, to make their way. It's definitely bubbling under the surface here in sure. Ontario. It's like, it's like where the wine industry was maybe 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Cider is big in the rest of the world, massive in France, Spain, Europe, mm -hmm. Britain. But here, it's like just coming through the surface. So, yeah, it's perhaps where the wine industry was 15, 10, 15 years ago. Sure. It's coming. Sure. But it's not quite mainstream yet. Yeah, because you had one of these dinners last year. We did indeed. Huge success. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you had a, a few, about four ciders on board, sort of, and now four you're... Ciders. Yeah, four ciders. Yeah, cideries, yes. Yeah. Right, and now you have more coming now, through. Now, this year we have ten ciders. Nice. So it's going to be yeah, big, massive. It's, it's grown so much, and we're very mm -hmm. pleased to be hosting an event again. Uh -huh. I kind of like the idea of this whole thing because, you know, obviously, as you're mentioning wineries, people are used to pairing food with wine. Right. Um, but uh, it, now we're talking cider. So as a chef, your approach is it, um, you know, I mean, obviously, there are different tasting notes within wine, so there must be within cider. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Different nuances in, mm -hmm. the, in the ciders from different apples that you put into your cider from, like, different yeast that you use, even terroir, different areas of Ontario. Okay, yeah. It creates yeah. different flavors. Okay, so and obviously different styles as well, like right. champagne styles to ice ciders. So yeah, it's very versatile. And that's so. So let's talk a little bit about some of the ciders um, because there are such different ones. And as you say, some of them are sparkling, which is kind of a neat uh, sort of approach. Yeah. Um, so what uh, we're looking at some of them here. What uh, you know, take us through uh, you know some of the different ones. Absolutely. So um, where we have these. Uh, the front here is British. There's a pear cider there, which is also known as Perry in mm -hmm. the UK. Mm -hmm. um, the Twin Pines there is a, is in Ontario, kind of like strong bar. I like to say it's like a strong bar kind of style. Okay, yeah. Like everyday drinking pub style. Right, right. And then next to these guys, you have two wine styles. So these are like 10%. Mm -hmm. uh, one is from Ontario Spirit Tree. It's a rose, so it's kind of it has a rose tint in mm -hmm. the glass. It's made of crab apples. Oh, okay. And then next to there we have ice ciders, which are made in the yeah, same Yeah, they totally method. look like an ice wine, don't they? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And then next to those guys we have uh, champagne style, so it's very versatile. Oh, wow, I love <laughs> that. Drink for every occasion and then not forgetting the one at the back, the big yeah, guy. Yeah, okay, let's talk about this big guy at the back. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> he looks that's my special. quite enjoy. I actually have quite a few more liters fermenting away somewhere. This but is something you put together yourself. Absolutely, <laughs> this is 100% uh, golden russet, so oh. yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> now, it's almost there. It's still bubbling a okay. little bit. Well, let's talk a little bit about, you yeah. know, the alcohol level. So our mm -hmm. um, ciders generally have pretty high alcohol content, uh, right? Well, if you ferment an apple out to its true strength, it'd probably come out somewhere between six and eight percent. Okay. But some people like a lighter style uh -huh. cider, like 5%, just like beer. They're competing with the beer market. But but uh, the champagne styles are like 8%. So okay. it's a little lighter, a little okay. bit more refreshing. And then there's yours. Summertime patio. And then there's my bad boy, which is, <laughs> we don't want to talk about it. Yeah, it's probably 9% mine, which is natural. Okay. There's no sugar at it. That's it's, so cool. It is what it is, yeah. And we were you know, talking earlier, too, that it's really actually, this is a drink that celiac, people who have celiac yeah. disease can drink because they're, they're gluten-free. Absolutely. So that's yeah. kind of nice. Could yeah, people always looking for a drink? Yeah, beer, and we have so many people with gluten allergy oh, coming to this restaurant. I so. bet. It's a great alternative. Absolutely. So, so okay. So let's talk about uh, about this dinner itself, and um, yeah. what I mean. Obviously, you're pairing throughout the, the course of the, the evening. Yeah. Um, what is one of the dishes you are going to be making? Okay. So one of the dishes is uh, we're going to do a scallop dish with pork belly, Brussels sprouts. Going to fry the Brussels sprouts nice and crispy. Uh, nice. Maitake mushrooms, mm -hmm. and uh, the the sauce is like um, it's like a chicken gravy kind of okay. thing. Chicken gravy with burnt brown butter. Oh, cool. Okay. It sounds a little crazy, but it's good. You, well, that's the thing. I, I, you know, you always sort of take a, a different twist on oh, some yeah. of the, the, we don't the like good to do classics. Things normal. You know, yeah. and I love that. We though, do, but right? we don't. We yeah. Like, we like to, we like to have like the, the basics there, but people can. But it's not too far out there, right? Oh, no. 
That's no. that's what's great about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, All right. We're grounded. <laughs> we're grounded. It's not. Now we're getting into a crazy molecular blah blah blah. Right. Yeah. We're getting into. We delve a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, so uh, so let's um let's okay. show me how you would prepare this uh, so particular I'll start dish. Cooking. So okay. <laughs> these are sea scops. Mm -hmm. These are East Coast sea sea, sea scops. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna cut them in half. <laughs> So now, you know, with, uh, with this particular dish, what are you thinking, which particular cider are you thinking you would pair with Well, that's it. I'm still waiting, like, mm -hmm. for the ciders to come back to me as to, so like, kinda... what they have. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see what comes back. But okay. uh, I'm thinking, like, some sparkly and bubbly. Yeah. Nice. Okay. like to play off the nuances of the scallop. Mm -hmm. Nice mm -hmm. acidity. Okay, let's hope this, uh, <laughs> this pan is up to heat. It's a hard part, like right? Hot. Especially when you're... Um... We like it hot. Now I know that you uh, you often have a sort of a scallop pork belly type uh, oh, we do. dish yeah, here, it's kind of, but you we just went change Asian it. with it. Like the last menu and this this menu is very much uh -huh. it's kind of similar to this dish what we're doing right now. It's like a, it's an apple and onion puree. It mm, goes nice. on the base of the okay. plate, which works nicely with the cider, right? With the cider mm -hmm. and the, let's see if I got the, the correct. Meat <laughs> here. That's the hard part about uh, television, right? It's trying to, That's it. so to cook some on heat. Him. a little bit of heat. That's good. Just gonna caramelize these. Got a nice golden brown color. Pork belly goes in at the same time. This pork belly That's has been perfect. previously braised. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that looks amazing. Ooh. Okay. So you know, as you're as you're preparing this, and um, you know, we should talk about the dinner itself. So people yeah. come in, nice sort of reception, and then literally they're sitting down to some nice sort of a variety of courses, right? So what happens is we we take over the observatory next door, mm -hmm. and we we're, we're going to set it up so all the cideries that are involved, the ten cideries, will have their own space, their own area. So okay. there'll be as you come in. There'll be tastings mm -hmm. of each of the side. You'll work your way around as well as Craig, uh, sommelier here, who'll be doing a cocktail, which apparently went down really well last year. I didn't get one personally, oh, but yeah, the this year oh, I'm going to get one. The chef is like hiding in the back, never gets one, right? He doesn't get one. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do cocktails and uh, cider tasting in the observatory. And then everybody comes to, through to the dining room. The dining room, it's a special occasion, so it's a sellout. We, uh, totally transform the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's like really, really good. I love it. And uh, yeah, we sit down, have a uh, six course tasting menu mm -hmm. uh, paired with different ciders and as the different cider comes out with a different course mm -hmm. there's going to be uh, um, as a different cider comes out with a different course there's going to be uh, the the, the uh, the ciders, the guys, mm -hmm. uh, just it. pairing up, right? <laughs> so basically, you know, I, that's what I like about the whole yeah. thing is that as you're as you're yeah. serving each one, yeah. you're getting paired up with a cider, right? So along Absolutely. the way, so yeah. oh, that looks good. That's like crisping up nicely. So I know we're running out of time because that's yeah. just the element of the whole thing. Um, so um, we're gonna let you finish that up, and oh, okay. um, and basically again, the the email address here is uh, spencers.ca, right? And yeah. uh, people can all also call as well and inquire yeah. about tickets. I mean, you know, it yeah. sells out quickly, so I know that you're kind of trying to hopefully have more events coming up. Um, but it sounds like it's great fun, and I'm also I'm seeing yeah. the event, so I'll be here as well. And That's very true. Yeah, we're looking so. forward, we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. So. All right, thanks again to uh, Chef Haworth here at Spencer's at the Waterfront. It's going to be a wonderful cider tasting dinner. Now we're moving on to Paint It Like New here in Burlington. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and now we're at a really neat little place here in Burlington called Paint It Like New. We're here with the owner-operator, Janet Hamilton, and uh, what a cool spot. Fairly new business, but 
really have it basically exploded at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's done well. Yeah. Thank you. And it's kind of yeah. neat, right? So we're we're kind of uh, edging along, getting closer to spring, and uh, and people, this is probably a really great time of year for you, where people are just really itching Very to so. for change and new and fresh, right? Yeah, totally. So that's what your business is about. Explain what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Well, the biggest part of our business is paint it like new, and people bring their indoor outdoor furniture. So the outdoor furniture gets really big, getting mm -hmm. into the um, warmer months. Yes. Um, also, their kitchen doors, bathroom doors. Is a great way to refinish them, very inexpensive. And uh, we sand them, prep them, clean them, prime them, and then spray them in whatever color they want by uh, Benjamin Moore. Nice. So, yeah, and it's what, beautiful. Which is kind of cool because um, a lot of people want to do this stuff. But when it's, it becomes a project of your own, you mm -hmm. sometimes just never get around to it, right? Because you sure. just explain. I mean, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot. Those are a lot of stages there. Yeah. Plus, you know, you get you got to take it off its hinges, and you got to, <laughs> yes, no, you know, whether it's true. furniture, whether it's a door. Yeah. But um, here, just drop it off to you, and they do. you guys, I guess, you can sit around, look. I guess you were mentioning Benjamin Benjamin Morris. So you can talk about the colors, and yeah. uh, and go through what I guess they maybe the discuss. Deck. Yeah, decor with yeah. you and For what sure. you think would work. They do um, sort of like to get our opinion on colors. Sure. Um, colors are very personal though and um, we may look at the same color and see something slightly different uh -huh. so it's very important that they sample those paint chips um, in their own space look at them with their um, their soft furnishings their pillows their blankets and that because this really is an opportunity to totally customize mm -hmm. to what you like mm -hmm. um, some people do like to work with a decorator the decorator will help them pick colors and then they come in and uh, make the final choice on sheen oh, okay. and um, excuse me, let everybody else do the rest. Okay, well that makes sense then, right, yeah. too. That helps mm -hmm. when you have a decorator to kind of mm -hmm. get you there as well, right? Totally. So, um, you know, we'll also talk about the fact that you, in this area where we are now, when you walk inside your business, mm -hmm. you had pieces on display and people wanted to buy them. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So, and it was very difficult because we had these set displays that were seasonal, and um, so finally I bit the bullet and we started to um, sell them. Mm -hmm. So you can visit our website, which is uh, paintitlikenew.com, and then click on the upcycle button, and you'll see a beautiful selection galleries of pieces that um, both are in their raw state, so you can pick whatever color, as well as some of the oh, okay. pieces we have actually already um, chosen some colors. Okay, so that's um, a nice idea too. People. So some of the pieces you have. Mm -hmm done yet so people can customize mm -hmm. them from there yes. yeah ah, so that's yeah. again saving people stages as well when they can just actually buy one that's already done too <laughs> yes well not everybody like, can oh. envision it in a new yeah. color so we decided it was better to chose choose some colors for those people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we pick very neutral colors we do have a couple chairs in the showroom that you see in great neutrals mm -hmm. um, one of the fabrics we've chosen to uh, we've upholstered seats even um, is a bit more of an unusual fabric mm -hmm. and then the other one's a bit more of a neutral yeah. so it fits into most people's um, homes and their tastes. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about sometimes when you have a focal point, you can go wild and crazy with some piece. Yes. If you keep a lot of your house neutral, then uh -huh. you can have some of those future yeah. pieces, right? Good choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so let's much. talk a little bit maybe what about behind me here and give people an example yeah. of sort of some of the things that you can do with pieces. Well, part of our showroom um, really is to inspire people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have unusual pieces. Um, they may not really, you know, think about doing something, but these mm -hmm. are two antique table leaves that I purchased at an antique market and um, these can actually be installed as a shelf. We did actually put a piece on the very back mm -hmm. um, so you could hang them as a hall, hall table um, or you could use them as we have on a beautiful island, display a table um, or a plant rather or a cookbook. You could also use it on your buffet table and tear up your beautiful platters, sure. or your cupcake platter. So it's really kind of a neat way to use. Otherwise, these would have gone into the dump, I'm sure. Isn't that amazing, though? I mean, so you guys are probably really helpful to people to help people think out of the side of the box as well, right? I mean, I hope so. <laughs> the, the fact that this used to be a table, I mean, people wouldn't ever yeah. can even imagine, right? For but sure. I mean, you've probably even along the way even more and more have opened up your eyes mm -hmm. and, and thought, wow, I can do anything with anything, yeah. right? Those well, pieces, sometimes people leave the side of the road and you're like, I'm going to take that. Yes, and <laughs> yes and we do, we do, yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, we also have um, another hall table. Mm -hmm. um, I took antique corbels. Mm -hmm. um, they're from the East Coast, a building that was getting demolished in this antique dealer city them so mm -hmm. we took those one set is a little bit more unique and we sprayed them up in a light color mm -hmm. and we installed a beautiful piece of granite from a local granite company custom granite and it was an off cut so we just cleaned up the edges and we installed beautiful. it beautiful. Um, another set of corbels I, I could really envision them being on a beautiful bookcase mm -hmm. or on a mantle and using them as bookends so kind of another unique way great of, um, creative. Yeah. Of, uh, of using the corbels and again that's a great thing is that you know you, you can 
paint them black, you can paint them red, orange, whatever. Definitely. Make them a feature Definitely. piece. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Use a trend color. You know, orange is very popular this year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. one or two pieces in orange, it's not a huge commitment. So, yeah. another great way. Okay. Um, we also have a couple of antique ladders. Mm -hmm. One's an apple picking ladder from the Niagara Peninsula. Love it. And we've displayed that with um, some great uh, blankets and books. And you could loop your magazines over the rungs. Um, so it's great in a family room. And then we have another sort of typical ladder, wooden ladder, but we sprayed it up in red, so very yeah. vibrant. Oh, I love this. That's and so nice. um, beautiful in a small apartment where you don't have a lot of storage or in a cottage if you're looking for oh, unique display. Yep. Um, so we put a few pieces on it again to show beautiful tea towels and um, colander and mm -hmm, uh, cookbooks mm -hmm. and things. So. Um, another very unique way to use um, the ladders and yeah. again you can have fun with color. Yeah, I like that idea too because especially when you're seeing a lot of people now, um, particularly as you move east of us, uh, you know, towards Toronto, a lot of condo living going on small spaces. Yeah. So you have to think sort of uh, outside the box again on, uh -huh. on how you use your space. Yeah. Right? So you yeah. have ideas for that. And character. <coughs> it adds a little character. bit of character. Yeah. Yes. So instead of buying, you know, your typical bookcase and lining it up with mm -hmm. all your cookbooks, you could certainly use the ladder as a yeah. really unique way of displaying. They so. also had uh, a door you're mentioning as well. Yeah, kind of yeah. We only managed to do one thing with the door. I'm still looking for another door, mm -hmm. but um, what we did was spray up the door black. It mm -hmm. had beautiful hardware. The handle was missing, but the back plate was still quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've done is um, put on some beautiful photographs mm -hmm. that mean a lot to us and um, some botanical postcards. So you could do a lot of unique postcards from your travels, mm -hmm. be great in an office, kids room, display all their sure. awards. Um, but you could also get a beautiful door, cut it out and have mirror installed for a big massive mirror in your dining room. I love it. Oh, so, it's, so, it's so fun. Yeah. There's so many possibilities. So uh, just to wrap it all up, if someone wants to, they have a piece and they're just sick of it and they want to get some inspiration from you, how do they do it? Just come in, bring it in? Um, totally. Mm -hmm. um, you can also mm -hmm. visit our website. Mm -hmm. We have lots in our gallery from Paint It Like New. We share everybody else's inspiration stories. Um, as well as our upcycle um, page has got a lot of really great pieces in there. Okay. And by all means, email us and tell us what you have, and maybe we can uh, come back with some ideas for you. I love it. So your email address again is? Um, paintitlikenew mm -hmm. at belnet.ca. Perfect. And again, it gives people a great inspiration just by looking on your website alone. And then I already am in here thinking, oh, wow, there's just so many options. So great. And it's perfect moving this time of year into spring. So thank you Definitely. so much for having us thank into you. your space. Thank you. All right, more Tara at home after this quick break. Please stay with us. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and we're back with Chef Rachel, and we're making a perfect dish for this time of year. Mm -hmm. Again, just a nice kind of uh, feel-good dish, right, which we yeah. love to eat this time of year, because you're not going to eat this in the middle of August, let's face it. No. <laughs> Baked Maybe pasta. Baked yes. pasta with cheese. Okay. We're going to add in some cauliflower and uh, asparagus, too. Perfect. Make it a little healthy. Well, if yeah, you and you that. know what? And also, it's good for it's good for kids too, right? Because if you, you need to, you can talk them into eating pasta and cheese, but you need to um, sometimes have a you know talk them really into uh, eating the vegetables. So yeah. if we incorporate that in there, then they'll come across it and hopefully eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> All right. So, so what uh, so what what kind of pasta are you using? Right. So I'm using fusilli pasta. Mm -hmm. So it's a spiral. And I've, uh, I've cooked that actually Okay, good. Uh, already just because it takes about 10 to 12 minutes. Cook your pasta according to the directions on the package, whether it be uh, dry or fresh. Mm -hmm. So we've got that cooked. Um, it, doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be cooked perfectly because it's going to go back in the oven too. So if it's a little underdone, that's okay. That's probably maybe the way to go, right? I know mm -hmm. sometimes when people bake the pasta afterwards, if they've overcooked, you know, or cooked it to mm -hmm. it's really soft, it kind of yeah. gets mushy, right, right, after you bake it. So, yeah, al so dente. Al dente, exactly. <laughs> and we're going to put it in the oven. So I have my broiler preheating to 
about 450 or if you have a temperature you can set it to 450 if not just high okay so that's ready to go also I've uh, I've already cut up my cauliflower okay into small pieces same with the asparagus mm -hmm. uh, the stalks just cut into maybe three or so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and blanch them so blanching vegetables is really easy just like your pasta a pot of salted water bring it up to a boil um, you know throw your cauliflower in takes about two minutes or so okay okay and then drain so it. you want to make sure that they've mm. they've cooked a little bit before mm -hmm. you're adding them to this yeah okay. exactly so same okay. with the asparagus mm -hmm. uh, just because it's not going to cook very long mm -hmm. in the oven so you want to make sure that they're I'd they're like to be you've used cooked. really tiny little asparagus too not mm -hmm. the big coarse ones right yeah. if you can I mean sometimes you can't help but find those but right okay um, actually when when I was getting those I had the choice so mm -hmm. I, I prefer the mm -hmm. smaller ones as well personally. now could you use frozen vegetables in this dish sure yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, okay. There's no you just reason. have to make sure you, I think, drain them properly, right? So they're not too watery. Mm -hmm. And I think that's yeah. um, that's happened. Thaw people. and drain before you use okay. them. But yes, of okay. course, if you have some in the freezer. Okay. Uh, so the main thing here, after you've got your vegetables and your pasta already, mm -hmm. is just preparing the sauce. Uh huh. So, but that's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> just a big pot of cheese sauce. Yeah. <laughs> now I have the milk, um, the milk on the stove right now. So this is about three and a half cups of milk. Mm -hmm. You just want to keep that you know a low heat but you want to what they call scald it mm -hmm. okay so you just want to get it nice and warm not mm -hmm. not burnt or bubbling but so scalding just, not burnt <laughs> right yeah isn't that funny it's easy <laughs> to burn milk though it is and then it, it doesn't taste very good yeah that's true Got it. the term is called scalding but yeah right. you just want it on a low heat yep uh, you want to warm it up, right, but like I said, mm -hmm. be careful not to burn it. If it's on a low heat, you should be fine, but basically we're just warming it up. Okay. Uh, you'll know it's it's where it should be when the bubbles form around the edge like that. Okay. Okay, and then we have another pot. Now, when I'm making a cheese sauce, I like to start off with a roux. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way that I do cheese sauce. I think it works best. Uh, roux is very simple to do, mm -hmm. and it's a good base for basically any sauce that you want to do. Okay. So, equal parts uh, butter and flour. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have about, let's see, this is about three tablespoons of butter. Now I had this pot heating up. Yeah, so you have to, once the pot's hot, right, you have to be careful you don't burn the butter, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So this is a little golden. That's okay. That's okay. So we'll do <laughs> equal parts butter and flour. Mm -hmm. And you want to cook a roux always on a low heat. Mm -hmm. So you just put the flour in right with that. So butter first, flour second, and you're just yeah. trying to create like a sort of a nice soft paste, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, and this is basically um, a thickening agent, right? What, this is how, how you're kind of... Yep. That's exactly what it is. I'm just going to add a little bit more butter here. Okay. Um, but yeah, basically you want it to be um, nice and smooth. Not mm -hmm. very lumpy, mm -hmm. and yes, it's going to help to thicken okay. um, the rest of the sauce. So you just want to cook that on low heat for a minute. Okay. See the consistency of that? How it's it's not very lumpy, but it's uh, nice and thick. Mm -hmm. And then to that, we will add in uh, our milk. Okay. And so you want to add that in slowly. Right. And okay. that's way it does it. It's not lumpy, right? I find right. people making cheese sauces. This is the hardest part. You're trying to keep it smooth. Exactly. Okay. So slowly adding milk. So we'll get this off. Make sure that's low. Mm -hmm. Yep. So just a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. and we'll whisk. Okay. Now, once enough is incorporated, that you see it start to kind of break thin out. up and thin out, then you can just add the rest in. So it's going to kind of stay lumpy like that for a bit. Mm -hmm. Whisk a little more. So this is something that you. Kind of have to tend to. I was going to say, I think you, you have to keep on it. You get used to it. Once you ma you're you making this, you kind of get used to the process, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, it's a lot easier to do. Yeah. It's very simple to make a, a roux. Mm -hmm. If you uh, if you have the right um, the right instructions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so see that that's starting to. Okay, so now once you get to the right consistency of this, yep. then what's, what are the next steps? The next step is just to add in the cheese. Okay, now you have a whole, you have sort of a, a mix of cheese here. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, cheddar, mm -hmm. smoked cheddar actually, Ooh. some gouda, Good idea. and some Swiss. Okay, so you're going to give better, more of an intense flavor to mm -hmm. this. Yep, so that's, yeah. uh, that's my combination. Obviously if you have kids who just really like mild, mild cheese and you could just use a mild cheddar and they're fine with that, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. So we also have some Parmesan as well that we're going to add in. Okay. So we add that in kind of when all this, when all this milk is incorporated and we have a nice 
sauce. Okay. We can mix that all in. Okay. Let me just, sorry, I'm just gonna. Sorry, I'm pushing no, you along. Okay. <laughs> that's television for you. I need to add a little bit more. Okay. Um, yeah, and then uh, what we can do, you can add in to that big bowl there, mm -hmm. the cauliflower, mm -hmm. the asparagus, we'll put the pasta in there. Okay. We'll mix that all together. When the cheese sauce is all cooked up, we'll add that in as well. Okay. And then we can mix it all up, put it in our casserole dish okay, to go in the oven. Okay, I'm going to grab the pasta right behind you here. So I'm going to put all that in there? Yep. All right, There's I just want to make sure I don't get the water, right? There a little bit of water right? in there. Okay, good. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to put this together, and uh, we have to put it in the oven, right? Yes. And oh boy, it's going to be wonderful when we return with more Terra Home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and uh, Chef Rachel has just put the finishing touches and pulled this wonderful, wonderful dish out of the oven, Thank and you. we're all just, oh, our tummies, we are, <laughs> it smells so good. This is definitely Thank comfort you. food, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, this is a nice cheesy pasta bake that you made. Yep. Some good vegetables you've added in there. Yes, mm -hmm. some uh, asparagus and cauliflower. So I had you mix that up with the pasta. Right. When the cheese sauce was done, uh, we added in the, the mm -hmm. three cheese blend and the Parmesan cheese. Mix it all together, and then you just pour it into your into your casserole dish. I sprinkled some Italian breadcrumbs on top, yep. a little bit of melted butter, and uh, just under the broiler for about five minutes or so. And you can see that it's brown nicely. So that's the thing; it's already everything's already cooked by the time you put it in there, right? Yeah. So it's just about warming it up and making it brown. Of course, the 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 nice uh, little topping makes yeah. it uh, have exactly. a nice sort of a appeal too, mm -hmm. right? It looks good. Okay, so are you going to? Uh, to serve it out we'll now again some. this is also a great thing to have while you're you know um with a side salad something like that right so you yeah, can of course you know uh you're getting some more vegetables as well right, right. it's a great way to sneak in the vegetables as we were yeah. mentioning earlier for the kids too and, so. and of course you can always use you know you were saying frozen vegetables or any leftover vegetables mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. have as well yep to use that up and then you know it saves you a step they're already they're already cooked yeah exactly in your fridge right yeah that's the thing sometimes you get the a lot of frozen vegetables you you know, they're great for throwing in soups and stuff, but casseroles as well. So, yeah, this looks nice really, for really you. good. And again, so of course we were mentioning that, um, you know, you can always check out these recipes on our website at terragreenhouses.com. Um, all of Rachel's recipes are on there. So, and, and it's Thank nice you. because you make things look really easy. And again, this is a, a perfect comfort food for people this time of year. Yeah. And, uh, you know. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Love it, <laughs> love it, love it. Uh, again, our show always airs, of course, 5 a.m. on Saturday mornings. And uh, and it's been fun hanging out here with you, Rachel. Yeah, and, uh, thank you. Can't I wait to see what you it. make for us next time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a whirl. Thank this you. is us signing off here. Tara at home. Have a good one. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives.